Hello, Stekos. Uh, did you have a nice breakfast? Yeah, some people are eating now. Yeah. So it's the last day of this summit and the first session of today. Uh, thanks for coming to our session. Actually, we are not native speaker, as you know, so you need a little patience. Let's start our journey. I'm John Han. I'm a DevOps engineer in the cloud computing team in Netmarble. Hello, I'm Jae Sang Lee. Uh, I'm, <coughs> I work for SK Telecom at South Korea. Uh, I have been working on Cinder for several years. Uh, now I'm responsible for uh, deploy and operate uh, Cinder with SAP. This is a second summit I, I joined. At last, uh, I, I went to Barcelona and I was only watching. Uh, but this time is the first I present. Uh, it, it's such an honor uh, to present this time. Uh, we have one more presenter, Byung-Soo, but he can attend this time because uh, he has some personal reason, unfortunately. Uh, since uh, we came from very far away, uh, and you might not know our company, uh, let me introduce <laughs> our company first. Uh, SK Telecom is our first telecom company in South Korea. Like many other telco, uh, we are making a lot of efforts to uh, virtualize the networks. Uh, I belong to NIC Research Center. It's a synonym of network IT convergence. We are committed to compute and network and, and storage virtualization. Uh, the open system is researching compute and network virtualization. Our mission is to <coughs> virtualize uh, all of our legacy infrastructure. Oreo is our project for proud cloud platform. It's a synonym of open, reliable, elastic on OpenStack. We're trying to build uh, auto-upgrade uh, OpenStack platform on Kubernetes, and that virtualization, virtualization solutions are developing that called Sona. Each neutron ML driver and S3 service program are based on Onus. Yeah, I want to show a cartoon before introducing my company. So do you know what does this simple four card cartoon mean? Let's see, raise your hand. Yeah, so many, oh, you know, yes. And many people know that Korea is famous for its gaming skill like StarCraft or LOL. But Korea has a lot of game companies also. Netmarble is one of the Korean game companies. Over a relatively short span of two years, we have rapidly and constantly moved up the ranks among global ga mobile game publishers. As of February 2017, we ranked number three in Apple App Store and Google Play combined. In Google Play alone, we were the number one publisher in the world. We have over 10,000 running instances that are on service related on 40 games and platforms. We have eight staff clusters, and the total usage is over two petabytes. Okay, our role is uh, DevOps for productory service uh, each at each company. We are concerned about the efficient and fast integration, <coughs> Ceph and Cinder. Uh, as, as everybody knows, there is no longer any doubt uh, that SAP is the most typical and powerful backend uh, of Cinder. Uh, SAP is a unified storage system that uh, supports multiple interfaces, uh, including object storage, block storage, and file storage. It also supports uh, most of the storage service in the OpenStack, so it enables uh, storage as a service. Uh, also, uh, SAP's copy and write is uh, uh, extremely helpful for uh, cloud services that need to deploy VMs quickly. However, despite of these advantages, uh, there are uh, many difficulties in, it, in integrate SAP uh, with OpenStack in the pro production environment. And this next four post it notes are the topics uh, we want to talk to you. Uh, while operating a storage service, it was imperative to address elements such as uh, performance tuning, HA, volume migration, and replication. 
But the existing documents and guides uh, could not be adequately supported. Uh, we want to share our experience uh, about these topics. And this presentation is intended for storage, op storage, man storage service uh, manager and operator who want to operate cloud service. Uh, not already expert. Uh, I think uh, there will be a uh, SAP experts or a group here because today is SAP day and this session is related topic with SAP. But uh, if you already if you already are uh, experts or guru, now you'd better go on another session I recommend. <laughs> yeah. Okay, our agenda is largely uh, uh, performance tuning and uh, operation. Mr. John, uh, Mr. John's part is performance <laughs> tuning, uh, like uh, uh, cross tunable bucket type, journal, journal tuning. And I will say about the operation topics, uh, including high availability and some, something else. OK, let's start with performance tuning. What do you think of performance of that? IO, throughput, latency, these are all right. But I think the performance of that should be considered in two aspects. The first is a simple numeric storage performance, and the second is the overall performance impact on recovery or rebalance. Today, I'm focusing on the second things. As the version of Ceph was released, the crush algorithm also advanced. The crush algorithm is the rules for storing where the data is stored. Ceph manages its history under the name of tunables for these algorithms. A series of tunable options that control whether the legacy or improved variation of the algorithm is used. You can find the crush tunables with the command sap osd crush your tunables. Each line means a specific set of algorithms. Sap sap tunable profiles named by the release like legacy, argonaut, bobtail, and so on. Legacy profile is covered by the argonaut version of algorithm. Optimal profile is the best values of the current version of set. Let's take a closer look at the crush tunables. The most common profile is Firefly, I think. It fixed internal way calculates the algorithm for store bucket. Since Hammond profile, SAP supports store two bucket type. The dual tunable profile improves the overall behavior of crush such that significantly fewer mappings change when an OSD is marked out of the cluster. Thus, the more up-to-date the crush algorithm applied, the more improved the performance of data movement. Uh, however, there is something to be done before adjust optimal crush profile. The client must uh, support a feature of SAP tunables when you use kernel-based RBD. It is the reason that the default profile setting is Firefly, even though we install the dual version of SAP. For instance, if we want to apply dual version of tunables, your kernel should be above version 4.5. Bucket types define the type of buckets used in your crush hierarchy. Buckets consist of a hierarchical aggregation of storage locations like rows, racks, and hosts. Since Hammer version, SAP supports store two bucket, it fixes several limitations in the original store bucket. Specifically, store two achieves the original goal of only changing mappings to 
or from the bucket item whose weight has changed. The new stored bucket will apply when you change the self tunables to optimal. However, in the case of existing buckets, the cross rule must be changed manually to store two. Uh, this is the data move on test for store and store two bucket. The test environments are consist of total six hosts and 84 OSDs. We chose six OSD randomly and changed the way to 0.3. In case of a store bucket, total 8.713% objects are degraded. In case of a store two bucket, total 3.596% objects are degraded. We figured out that store two bucket type can improve or of rebalancing performance. Next tuning point is SSD journal. SSD can be divided three types according to read-write priority. Read-intensive SSD benefits for read performance. On the other hand, write-intensive SSD supports application with heavy write workload. You can find the specific performance has a big gap even though there is the same model of SS device. For most cloud environments, write I.O. ratios account for more than read. In our case, almost 9 to 1. SS journal write performance can be bottleneck during rebalance or recovery. Thus, the performance of rebalance can be improved when you use write intensive SS journal. This is, this is a test environment to check the performance impact of recovery of SAP. We implement OpStack with SAP. 100 VMs are running on five compute nodes. We developed a Python agent that stores VMs read write, uh, read write performance data into InfluxDB via FeedBench tool. We store the data every minute and make a graph them and through Grafana. In addition, one or two OSDR were intentionally removed physically to generate fault condition to check the effect of recovery. As a result of test, IO weight was observed on the SS journal disk. We figured out that right performance of SS journal can be a bottleneck of recovery performance. The overall throughput after replacing with the write intensive SSD was improved from 254 megabyte per sec to 460 megabyte per sec. Failure times have also been dramatically reduced from 100 minutes to 48 minutes in the case of physical removal of two OSDs. In conclusion, you should choose the SS type that is appropriate for your workload environment. Yeah, next post it is high availability. It's very critical and important part of system administrator from service launching to finish. Uh, how about Cinder HA? Uh, Cinder service uh, consists of API and scheduler uh, volume and backup service. API and scheduler are uh, relatively easy to deploy uh, through HA Prox and RabbitMQ. But uh, volume and backup service has many difficulties uh, in communicating with uh, volume backends. Now let me talk about uh, HA, about Cinder volume and Cinder backup. Tradi traditionally, Cinder volume service uh, was started on just one node. Uh, and it can be moved and migrated uh, to other controllers, <coughs> other controllers as necessary. Due to single threading uh, required for single volume, uh, there is a single point of failure. Uh, we have good and bad news for this, uh, this problem. In this picture, uh, you can see uh, support high availability active active configura configurations in single volume. Uh, this picture hasn't been completed yet. Uh, 
over more than a year. But it has good progress. Uh, you can test the active, active configuration now. It's a very simple workflow, I think, uh, about cinder volume active active feature. Most big concept about cinder volume active active is uh, cluster. Uh, if you cluster the multiple cinder volume, a cinder volume makes a queue for cluster use. Uh, when cinder API was request uh, API call, it scheduled the request uh, through cluster queue. Uh, let me tell about the proof of concept for cinder volume active active feature. Uh, because this feature is under construction, if you want to test this feature, add support active active option in self volume driver in in Cinder, like this. And add a cluster option in Cinder configuration file. Uh, that is all. It's very simple. This is an example a configuration that add cluster and host parameter in Cinder configuration at two hosts. And then you can check the cluster status by run cluster command. Uh, this is, uh, there is nothing, but uh, you can check the cluster status after you run the cluster. Uh, because uh, Cinder API support uh, cluster command from 3.11, you should set OS volume API version higher than 3.11. Uh, th in this example, I set uh, 3.29. This is a cluster res res result after you uh, activate cluster in yellow box. Uh, uh, from now on, this cluster uh, admin life cycle of volumes. <coughs> And then I, really, uh, I try to rarely test uh, about po volume create and delete. This scenario will create and delete 30 volumes <coughs> with 10 tenants and 20 users. Concurrency is two. Two cinder volume is running and add test and test of the scenario. As expected, all, all test case was a success. Uh, two cinder volume service was scheduled round robin internally. I ran the same test and down the one cinder volume. Although I stopped the cinder volume at host two, all volumes was created and deleted successfully. Next is another scenario uh, that is uh, create volume and attach to VM. It creates five, vo five VM based on zero semis and create volume that size from one to five and attach to, to VM. Two cinder volume is running and test of a scenario. All action was also success, like first test, first, first test case. Two cinder volume was scheduled uh, round robin internally. I also executed uh, one more time and stopped one cinder volume service. Uh, it's, uh, it was success like the first test. Uh, all test cases was success. Uh, it's a simple test, but uh, I think it covers a very core function of cinder volume, like uh, create, delete, and attach, detach. If you're running just uh, one cinder volume and you have a SPO, SPO app, it's worth considering this feature. But uh, because this feature is on, under construction, uh, I hope to finish this feature as soon as possible. Uh, next is uh, HA for Cinder Backup. Cinder Backup is already available that multiple service, but uh, it's a scalable, scalable feature, not HA, strictly speaking. If you, if you use this feature, you can execute uh, multiple backup service. Every service uh, ha handles the backup uh, CRUD each. Even if a backup service, uh, one backup service dies, backup service uh, can maintain uh, uh, through another service. Uh, this is also workflow for Cinder backups, uh, but it doesn't create a uh, new queue, uh, like, uh, unlike uh, Cinder volume. Each host has a backup queue, and Cinder API choose one queue randomly uh, if they are same availability zone. For multiple Cinder backup service, uh, it doesn't need a typical option two. Each backup service uh, has the same availability zone and same backup driver, and only different option is just host. Uh, this is a common result for Cinder service list. Uh, there are two Cinder backup, 
uh, service at two hosts. I also rendered the test. Uh, this is a crate volume and backup test scenario. Uh, it creates uh, 30 volumes and backup. And concurrency is also true. Yeah. Uh, to see the backup service was selected by randomly, uh, since the API service chooses that, uh, every request is a success. I, I also ex execute the test one more time but, uh, and stop the once in the backup service, but there are two errors occurred and success per rate is not 100%. It's a timeout exception because uh, backup status isn't changed from deleting to deleted or from, uh, from creating to available. Pushing the backups, I, it seems too difficult to maintain a perfect HA state because uh, it's a scalable service. But even if one service is down, uh, the rest can work without any interruption because uh, since the backup service uh, has the same ability zone and, and same backup driver, uh, they can delete and restore uh, backup made by others. Okay, next topic is uh, volume migration. Okay, it's my turn again. What kind of feature? Volume migration is uh, migrating a volume transparently moves its data from the current backend to, for the volume to a new one. How can it take advantage of this feature in production environment? We are able to move volumes at the cluster and work on the volume of the cluster if it has a large impact on overall performance or stability, such as maintenance or major upgrade. Volume migration of Cinder can be divided into two ways. First is a driver-specific migration, which is internally supported in storage driver, like EMC VMAX, and HP 3 pass storage. Unfortunately, RBD driver does not provide its own migration functionality yet. If the backend driver is not able to perform the migration, the block storage uses host-assisted migration. In case of block-based storage using the iSCSI protocol, mount both the old volume and new volume on the Cinder volume node, copy the data through the DD command, and delete the existing volume. In the case of Ceph, volume migration operate uh, through the file-based file copy. Let's look at how the function works and what happens to the result through four typical user case when using the Ceph backend. Okay, let's look at a volume migration flow. When the client requests the volume migration, the API's migrate volume function is called. The target host is specified, but it goes through the Cinder scheduler logic. Migrate volume function in volume manager calls same name of function in RBD driver, but it's not implemented. Volume manager calls migrate volume generic function in order to operate host assisted migration function. Host assisted migration functions works as creating a new volume on the destination backend and copying the data from source volume to a new volume and delete the source volume. Now let's check the result of actual migration through four user cases. User case one is available volume and same RBD backend and same type. The volume backend consists of two clusters, Ceph-1, Ceph-2. Let's migrate volume from cluster one to cluster two. The full sourced copy of the command argument means that you want to perform host-assisted migration. 
During migration, a new volume with the same name as the source volume is created on the Ceph cluster 2, and data is copied from source to destination volume. Yeah, volume is migrated to Ceph cluster 2. You can find migration status changed to success with Ceph cinder show command. Use case 2 is available volume and same RBD backend, but different volume type. There are two volume types. One is self-1, the other is self-2, which are mapped to the same name of the cluster. Volume migration was also successful. However, the volume type is still applied to the existing volume type. If the volume type is different, the volume type does not change automatically. So you need to make a manual change. You can change the target volume type using the retype command. UGK3 is the volume migration between Ceph and block-based volume backend. At first, you should remove the capability filter because the filter blocks when volume backend is different between source and destination volume. We use ecologic volume backend as a block-based driver. We create ecologic volume and attach the volume to, the, to a VM. We mount the uh, volume and make a test file. Volume migration was performed successfully on the Cinder side Usually retype as same as use case two. We attached the, the volume to the VM. However, we will face the error message when we try to mount the volume. Yes, we can fix it through those tools. Even though we can fix it, I do not want to create a situation that will cause problem. UG case 4 is same as UG case 1, but the volume is attached to the VM. An error raised in Nova Compute Service when we try to migrate volume. Swap only supports host devices error occurred when running report default swap volume function. There is also related blueprint for solving that problem, but not started yet. Let's wrap up. Migration between the same RBD backend volumes in available state is very well done. However, if the type is different, you must manually retype. Migration between Ceph and other backends can be done through several volume fixes, but I do not want to recommend it. Migration between the in-use state and the RBD backend is not yet performed normally. Okay, the last post-it is volume replication. What is RBD mirroring? It means RBD images can be asynchronously mirrored between two set clusters. This capability uses the RBD journaling image feature. From the Dual release, Ceph started supporting the RBD mirroring feature. There are two types of mirroring. When applied to pool unit, all images created in the pool are mirrored automatically. Or can be configured in image unit only. How can you take advantage of this feature in the production environment? We can utilize it for disaster recovery. Let's talk about Cinder volume replication. It depends on the driver's implementation. There is no automatic failover since the use case is disaster recovery, and it must be done manually when the primary backend is out. Here is overall step for self replication in Cinder. The Cinder replication of self backend requires 
two different self cluster or many. Configure self cluster to mirror mode and apply mirror to pull used in Cinder. In most cases, use the volumes pull. Copy the configuration file and key of each self cluster to the Cinder volume node. Then add a replication settings to the self backend of the Cinder configuration file. Let me explain on detail from Ceph side. We should install Ceph mirror package for Ceph clusters. You can install easily using app or yum command. Enable and start the Ceph RBD mirror service and enable mirror mode to volumes pool on all clusters. Copy the configuration file of the other cluster to the primary and secondary node respectively. Note that you must save the name of each cluster's configuration file and key file differently. RBD mirror pull peer add command is used to peer the different clusters. At this time, since the peer is established based on the host node, the information of the different cluster is registered in the host file. For the configuration file, we need to define replication device option. We create volume type, which is named replicated, and set two extra specs one is replication enabled, the other is volume backend name. Let's create a volume with a replicated volume type. After for a while you request volume creation, you can see the volume information that replicated status is enabled. Let's see how the volume is created in the actual self clusters. You can see that Journaling feature has been added to the volume in all self clusters. The mirror status show, shows up plus stopped in primary cluster and up plus replaying in the secondary cluster. Now it's time to make a failover. You can find that the replication status of self backend service is enabled before we do failover. Uh, we have a problem with primary cluster, so we must do failover. Just type failover-host command. You can find that the value of a replication status is failing over after we did failover. What about the cinder volumes? On normal volume that has not been created with the replicated type will be in an error state. And the replicate type volume will fail over normally. If you look at the actual self cluster, you can see that the mirror status of the two clusters have swapped. Uh, <clears throat> but I have uh, one hidden post. And this is a bonus and really last section on uh, tips and tricks. Uh, let's talk about some of tips uh, that number of volumes in one single VM and RBD cache and TCP, congest TCP congestion algorithm ish and failover of OSD nodes. Uh, do you have any ex experience that attaching many disks to one single VM until error occurred? Although KVM supports a uh, so many, so many disks are uh, over 100 in Nova compute. It supposed maximum number of disks uh, can attach it is only just uh, 26, like alphabet order from A to Z. So uh, if you try to attach uh, 27 volumes to single VM, the error occurred. Uh, this is a Nova compute log when you attach the 27 volumes. Uh, but in reality, the number of volumes that we can use to single VM is considered separate with this above course. 
recently I got issue reports uh, that customers VM that attach 10 volumes is hang. Uh, he attached 10 same size volumes to single VM and format disk by MKFS. As, as soon as the eighth volume was format, uh, the VM didn't respond. A control plus C break key didn't exit the process, and MKF process uh, didn't killed by kill command uh, other terminal. After that, uh, I saw the VM kernel log. Uh, there is only message saying that uh, there is no response for more than 120 seconds, and there is no comment except that. I don't know what makes this. So I uh, start to search about this problem uh, at Google, and there is uh, some mailing list about that. A reason is a file descriptor for a uh, file descriptor limit of QMU. In, K in KVM, it executes a uh, QMU process per VM, and FT limit is 1024 per 1VM. One a number of file descriptor per VM is increased when attached disk and actual I.O. occurs within a VM. Every test is the same in our environment. Uh, every MKFS to attach volumes increase number of FD. And, and then FD limit is over when trying to format ACE volume. Uh, from the moment FD over limit, the I.O. behavior in the VM uh, has not been executed. The hang is start. Okay, how to try, how to fix it. Uh, to, to solve this problem, change your fix, uh, max files option in, in the QM configuration, because the default value is 1024. Uh, you, can, you calculate appro appropriate value uh, of your environment. Uh, how to estimate value is uh, I, I uh, make the, some formula. Uh, you should set the A, B, C, the three numbers. Check number of FD for your new VM is A, and set the volume quota to your single VM is B. And, and last, number of FD per volume in your environment is C. So the formula is uh, A plus B multiplied C. For example, FD per new VM is uh, one, 150, and volume limit per single VM is 10. FD per volume when you attach is 100. So you should set max files to more than uh, 1,150. After that, you should, uh, you should uh, restart service report D. Next is uh, RBD cache is not issue, just uh, tips. Uh, RBD cache is a very important feature when you use CEP block device. In CEP in OpenStack guide, uh, Many of you guys uh, see these guys. It mentioned edit SEP configuration uh, on every compute node uh, to set RBD cache like this. But in fact, I, I found uh, some comment uh, at blog. Uh, uh, I think uh, this option isn't required uh, in, at least in the OpenStack. This is uh, Sebastian's blog. Uh, he, I think he is a very famous guy uh, at SEP field. Uh, he says uh, this cache mode option in NovaConf affects every block device. So uh, you just test, uh, you just test uh, edit NovaConf, not SEPConf. So option is just uh, this cache mode, uh, equal network, equal write back in report section. After re restart Nova Compute, uh, Nova Compute adds a cache parameter to VM, so you can check dump XML of VM. What is different? Uh, there is a B4 and F2 XML for VM. You can see the cache option is different. And this is a performance result uh, about when you activate cache option. The difference is uh, 20 times greater. This is why RBD cache is highly recommended. Uh, next is, uh, this, uh, we'll discuss about performance issued by the TCP congestion control algorithm. We use the CentOS in our environment. We upgrade CentOS from uh, 7.1 to 7.2, and kernel is also upgraded. 
However, we found that throughput in large block size drops to 40% between CentOS 7.1 uh, and 7.2. So we traced, the we traced the problem and found that it's influenced by the change of TCP uh, congestion control algorithm. Uh, the cause of the problem is when the TCP congestion control algorithm containing stretch X patch is used in situation where a large packet workload is loaded and the network is busy. Uh, currently, the default algorithm of TCP congestion control is Cubic in 7.2 version. Cubic and Reno algorithm actually implement stretch X patch. So uh, we test the other TCP congestion control algorithm, uh, which does not contain the stretch X patch in CentOS 7.2 as follows. Our test results show that high speed and Pino algorithm are similar to uh, 7.1, uh, even better in Raji write. This is related value to cubic algorithm in 7.1. If you maximize performance uh, for Raji block, uh, this is worth to reconfigure uh, like that. Yeah, next tip is about OSD host failure. Let's imagine um, there will happen OSD marked out situation. The reasons could be disk failure or file system error, etc. We, we normally remove the disk for re resolving the problem and add a new disk into a self cluster. How about OSD host failure? The reason could be electric problem or network problem. So anyway, it's not a disk failure problem. We don't have to remove data from disk. Therefore, we want to Ceph not to proceed rebalancing. Ceph has subtree limit concept. Subtree limit means the smallest cross unit type that Ceph will not automatically mark out. The default value is rack. In order to set a value from rack to host, we can add configuration like that or configure on runtime through that command. Uh, OK, our presentation is finished. Uh, performance, HA, migration, and data replication is very important thing uh, for operator service. Uh, if you want to operate storage service uh, with Ceph, there will be a lot of uh, attention, to, uh, attention ahead. But uh, we hope to uh, keep going your status, and we hope that the community will share a better experience and insights in the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Actually, the time is over. So do you, anybody has any question, please come to us. Thank you.